Plug-in hybrid vehicles tend to have kind of a bad reputation among EV enthusiasts, and it's not necessarily hard to see why. After all, they usually only have an electric range of 30 to 40 miles, and once that's depleted, they then have to carry around this big, heavy electric battery using a relatively inefficient gasoline engine. However, after a week behind the wheel of the 2022 Hyundai Tucson plug-in, I'm not convinced that all of those arguments are completely valid. After all, this is a spacious crossover for a family of four that has more power and gets better fuel economy than the standard Hyundai Tucson. What's more, it's got 33 miles of all-electric range for clean, quiet, and smooth commuting. What's not to like? For the full Hyundai Tucson plug-in review, be sure to check out the link in the description. And if you want to keep updated on all of the news and reviews that we have coming down the pike, subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. For now, back to the Tucson. Since its debut last year, the Tucson family has become a familiar sight on our roads, and the plug-in hybrid variant doesn't really break that much new ground, stylistically speaking. It's got a unique front grille with the same invisible LED daytime running lights, bumper-mounted headlights, and the side profile is as beveled and chiseled as ever. The only clue that you're looking at an electrified Tucson is a subtle plug-in badge on the rear hatch. Otherwise, this is the same story that we've heard for about a year now. Whether or not you like the Tucson styling is a subjective matter. I personally think it looks great, and I really appreciate that they took some risks rather than designing a boring two-box shape like many other crossovers on the market. Although the Tucson plug-in is primarily focused on efficiency, there's no denying the genuine performance improvements that come with this plug-in hybrid powertrain. Gone is the standard Tucson's 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, which makes a barely adequate 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet. In its place is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four, which combines with a 67 kilowatt electric motor and a 13.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery for a total of 261 horsepower and 258 pound feet. And that difference is palpable. Suddenly, passing maneuvers are no longer a dramatic affair. You kind of just squeeze onto the throttle and you're gone. You've got plenty of torque to pass and to get on the freeway, and it all just works together very seamlessly. Handling shifting duties is a six-speed automatic transmission that's not sporty in the slightest, but it is invisible and it does just fine. The handoff between hybrid and electric power is pretty seamless, with only a little grumble coming from up front when the gas engine fires up. Furthermore, when you're driving just on electrons, you've got 224 pound-feet of torque to play with, which is more than enough to hustle up a freeway on-ramp. The Tucson's ride and handling definitely skew much more toward comfort than performance. Still, this is one smooth operator, and its torquey power plant and quiet interior make it feel more than ready for a family road trip. Like the exterior, the Tucson plug-in's cabin is all but indistinguishable from lesser variants of the compact SUV family. You get a few extra buttons in the center console and there is a little Charge Eco power display on the dashboard, but even that could be switched out for a tachometer if you'd rather have that information. But even if the plug-in's cabin isn't super distinctive compared to the regular Tucson, that's not necessarily a bad thing because this is a spacious and comfortable place to be. The front seats have plenty of support and power adjustability. This limited model has heated and ventilated seats, so it's very easy to stay comfortable. And then the rear seat is absolutely cavernous. It's gigantic, and there's a reclining seat back to help you prioritize passenger comfort or cargo space. In an increasingly competitive segment, the Tucson family definitely makes a strong case for itself in terms of cargo space and interior comfort. Now, if you're noticing a common theme, then you're not going to be surprised in the slightest when I tell you that the plug-in's tech suite is pretty much identical to that of the standard Tucson. That means a 10.3-inch digital instrument cluster across the board, with the SEL trim getting an 8-inch infotainment display, and this limited test are getting a larger 10.3 inch infotainment display. And of course, it comes with our usual complaint with Hyundai and Kia infotainment systems, which is that the standard eight inch screen gets wireless Apple CarPlay, while the optional 10.3 inch display does not. You need a USB cord. And that USB is the older, slower USB-A type instead of the newer C type cord. Otherwise, everything works really well. The screen's very easy to use and it's nice and big, and you've got a variety of information to choose from. No complaints there except for the fact that we just can't use wireless Apple CarPlay. Every Hyundai Tucson, hybrid or not, comes standard with automatic emergency braking and lane departure prevention technology. Option up to the Tucson SEL and you also get adaptive cruise control thrown into the mix. 
while the flagship limited model gets Hyundai's excellent highway driving assist, advanced driver assistance suite of technology. This makes the car remarkably easy to handle on long road trips or when sitting in traffic as it does stop and go functionality as well as keeps you well centered in the lanes and distanced away from other traffic. It's really a pretty impressive suite of technology that helps make long trips just a little bit less stressful and fatigue inducing. A long road trip is arguably a plug-in hybrid's greatest advantage over a traditional EV. As with other PHAVs, you just jump in the Tucson and go without having to worry about planning your route around stopping to charge. And that's because even if the battery is depleted, the gas engine kicks on and this car operates just like a traditional hybrid. The EPA says that you can get up to 35 miles per gallon combined in this car, which is admittedly a little bit less than the non-plug-in Tucson hybrid, but it's still not bad for a five-seat family crossover of this size. And even driven like an absolute lunatic, I still was able to get 24 miles per gallon on one section of my drive. And that was with a lot of jackrabbit starts and very hard, very heavy late braking. If you drive this thing more like a traditional crossover, it's not hard to see 40 miles per gallon show up on that little fuel economy display. And if you'd rather not burn any gasoline at all, the Hyundai Tucson provides you with 33 miles of all electric range. And making sure that you start every day with a full battery couldn't be simpler. That's because the infotainment display and your smartphone app allow you to select your utility provider's off-peak charging rates, as well as your scheduled departure every morning. That way, the Hyundai can decide exactly how much on-peak and off-peak energy to use to make sure that you start every day with a full battery. Hyundai says the Tucson plug-in will recharge on a 120-volt outlet in about 11 hours, or a 240-volt outlet in about two hours. That was easily enough time for me to start every morning with a fully charged battery and 33 miles of all-electric range before I burned a single drop of gasoline. During my week of testing, I never once had to go looking for a public charging station that might have been out of order by the time I actually got there anyway. Instead, I just drove this like a normal SUV, plugged it in at the end of every day to a normal household outlet, and was rewarded with an as-tested mileage of more than 50 miles per gallon. Definitely not bad. However, that number still meant that I was burning some gasoline, which is a bummer, both for my local air quality and for my wallet. Nothing's perfect, as they say. If you want a Tucson plug-in hybrid, you better be prepared to spend at least 36 grand on a base SEL model. And if you want this vehicle's snappy 19-inch wheels, larger infotainment screen, and heated and ventilated front seats, then you need to spring for the Limited, which costs $44,445, as tested with zero options. That's definitely a big chunk of change for a small crossover, but at the same time, it's not necessarily out of line with pricing for the Toyota RAV4 Prime and Ford Escape PHEV, both of which have less nice interiors, in my opinion. A fully electric future is all but inevitable, and I welcome it with open arms, especially since the public charging network is getting wider spread and more reliable. But for now, people who aren't quite ready to commit to a full EV, or folks who don't have regular access to charging, should consider the Tucson plug-in hybrid to be a phenomenal way to cut down on your tailpipe emissions while still driving a quick, smartly styled family crossover. Thanks for watching.